Setting color space in Photoshop and Lightroom is easy. Let me show you how. Welcome back to the Visual Center. I'm Carlos. And now that we understand color space better, let's dive into Photoshop and Lightroom and see how to set it. If you missed my previous video and you want to understand what color space is, you can click on the card or you can click on the link in the description below. And while you're there, go ahead and click on the subscribe button and don't forget the bell to get notified when our new videos come out. Okay, let's start in Photoshop. Now it's important to understand that Photoshop and Lightroom do not have their own color spaces. A color space is assigned to the file itself. So every file you open is gonna have its own color space. What we will be setting now is what color space you would prefer to work in and what Photoshop will assign to files that do not have a color space. We start by opening Photoshop's color settings. In the top menu, you'll wanna to go to edit and then down to color settings. And in this window, you'll have three main sections, working spaces, color management policies, and conversion options. So first, let me start with my recommended settings, and then we'll go through each section so you understand what they are in case you wanna do it differently. Keep in mind that my recommendation is based on a printing workflow. I see a print ready file as the highest quality version of that image. And that can be converted down into a lower quality image for different purposes, web use, digital presentations, and so on. The settings I use for this are pretty easy to remember because you can use a built-in preset. Up here where it says settings, you'll find different presets for different purposes. If you use Photoshop only for web design, then North America Web Internet will be the optimal choice for you. As I'm using a print workflow, I'd select North America Prepress 2. This will set all three sections to the settings optimal for printing. And that's it. Just set the preset to North America Prepress 2. Now, let's take a closer look at what these sections are so you can make changes to your own personal workflow. The first section we have is working spaces. Now this setting is often mistaken as Photoshop's workspace, the color space that Photoshop works in. But remember, Photoshop does not have a color space. The color space exists inside the file itself. What this section is for is that if the file you're opening does not have a color space assigned, Photoshop will automatically assign it this space. Or if you're working in the CMYK mode, this space. This doesn't happen very often, most files are going to have a color space assigned to it, but occasionally you'll come across a file that hasn't been saved properly and is missing a color space. That's one of the reasons for this section. The other reason is to set a general default space you prefer to work in, and Photoshop will compare every file you open to that default. That's what the color management policy section is doing. Now, no matter what preset you use or what other settings you choose, try to keep these settings as I have them here. You want these three set to preserve embedded profiles, and you want all three of these boxes checked. What that'll do is have Photoshop ask you what to do if the file space does not match your default. I'll show you what that looks like here in a minute, but this is really important because it allows you to maintain control of your color management at all times. The conversion options are just the tools and methods Photoshop is using to manage your colors, so you just want them set as you see them here. These are the most optimal. Now let me show you what happens when you open a file in Photoshop with these settings. This is a print ready file. If I open it, nothing really happens because its color space matches the defaults I told Photoshop to watch for. Down here you can see my documents profile is Adobe 98. Now let's open a different file. This file I downloaded off of the internet. If I try to open it, I get a message like this. Now give this video a thumbs up if you've ever seen this message, but blown right past it because you didn't know what it meant. What this message is saying is that the embedded color space is C2 and your default is Adobe 98. What do you want to do? And I have options. I can leave it, convert it, or remove it completely. Which one you choose will be determined by what you're trying to do. But the point is that it's giving you the choice and not making assumptions. Remaining in control of your color choices is really important in color management. You'll also get this message if you try to move one image into another, like in compositing. If the color spaces don't match, it'll ask you what to do. If you're not seeing these pop-ups, then you'll want to check your color settings. They are controlled by these three checkboxes. Make sure they are all checked. So that's how you set your color space settings in Photoshop. And just so you know, this is a set it and forget it type setting. 
If you're working on your own computer, you really only have to set this once. But if you're working on a public computer, like the library or school or your or work, you probably want to check these settings before you get started. Now that we know how to set the settings in Photoshop, and we know that Photoshop doesn't have its own color space, there is this lingering question of where do the files get assigned a color space? This can happen in a number of places. If you're creating an image from scratch in Photoshop, you'll actually select your color space when setting up the document. It can happen when you scan an image. Oftentimes, the scanning software will assign a color space to the image file. Some of you might be aware that you can actually choose color space in the camera settings itself, but those settings are really only for JPEGs. Now, if you shoot RAW, and we highly recommend that you shoot RAW, you can actually choose your color space after the fact. Let's open a RAW file into Photoshop's Adobe Camera RAW to see how. When you open a RAW file in Photoshop, it'll automatically open in Camera RAW. And even though by default, RAW files do not have a color space assigned to them, you will see information down here at the bottom, and it'll display your default output settings. If you click on it, you can change these settings. Here you set your color space. I'll set mine to Adobe 98. And since this is a RAW image, we want as much information as possible, so we'll set the depth to 16 bits. Then we'll hit OK, and this will assign a color space to your RAW file. While we are here in Adobe Camera Raw though, and I've mentioned it before, but it's worth mentioning again, that to further improve your colors, you can create a custom color profile for your camera using an X-Rite color checker, and you can select that profile right here. Now we'll go ahead and hit Open, and there is our RAW image with the Adobe 98 color space assigned to it. If you ever need to check your image's color space, you can come down here to the bottom of the window, click on this little arrow, make sure you select Document Profile, and there's your image's color space. Now if you want to save this file for web, you actually don't want to use Adobe 98. Like we discussed in my last video, the internet uses sRGB. So what you can do here in Photoshop is go to File, Export, Save for Web. Now we could do a whole video on this window, but if we look over here, you'll see Convert to sRGB. Photoshop knows the web uses sRGB, so it'll help you optimize your file. You can even set your pixel dimensions here, and then save. Now that about wraps up using color space in Photoshop. Let's talk about Lightroom. And Lightroom is basically just a larger version of Adobe Camera Raw. And just like in Photoshop and in RAW files, Lightroom does not have a color space in itself, but you do have to assign a color space if you move from Lightroom to Photoshop. For that, we go to Preferences, and over to External Editing. Here, you'll see similar settings to Adobe Camera Raw. We can choose the file format to open into, the color space we want to open into, and the bit depth. You can now either right-click the image and select Edit In, Edit In Photoshop, or the shortcut for that is Command-E. This will bypass the Adobe Camera Raw window and will open your raw image into Photoshop with your preferred color space. You can also adjust your color space when exporting from Lightroom. If you select your image or a set of images, you can then select Export. If we go down to File Settings, we'll see where we can set our color space. Well, that's it for using color space in Photoshop and Lightroom. If you have any questions about color space, make sure to put them in the comments. If you found this video helpful, give it a like, and don't forget to subscribe and click that bell for notifications. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.